everybody. How we doing? Uh, pretty excited, obviously, to finally hit somebody else wearing a different color. Um, you know, thrilled to be uh, associated with the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic. This will be a, a fun event for our guys. Um, obviously, a, a lot of mutual respect for this this team. Uh, it's one that we have intimate knowledge of, but uh, really excited to get out there and play. I know our guys are anxious. They've been working really hard. You know, fall camp has been long, and uh, it's time to go play somebody else. So our guys have been practicing really well. We're working on kind of getting our legs back uh, after fall camp. You know, it's been a lot of work, and so really conscientious of what we've been doing there on the field with, with a group of guys, but also making sure that we're game ready. So that being said, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Dan, obviously this game means quite a bit for everybody, but Braden Swinson spoke specifically about feeling like he was overlooked, uh, at, in particular by, by George. I know you were there at the time, but it sounded like it was more Glenn and Kirby, but you know who was on the board. So can you speak to just going back to his recruitment and how much, if at all, you plan to kind of remind Braden about certain things this week because this has been a game like three plus years in the making for him? Yeah, I think uh, I think every one of our, you know, Braden including, but I think every single one of our guys is really excited to go play, you know, elite competition. Obviously, George is a great football team. Um, ultimately, there's so many stories like that that are stories, but the reality is that's all they are, stories. we got to go play the football game, and uh, Braden's got to go do it on the field. You know, what we talked to our team, you know, earlier today about is go play the game, not the occasion, right? And that's really what we're focused on. Front left, Matt. Their tight ends and Bowers and Washington and Gilbert. Just can you speak to just what they bring to the table and just that matchup and the importance of kind of keeping them corralled best you guys can. Yeah, I think it's arguably one of the best best uh, groups in the nation. It's hard to, to find a group that has as much talent in their room, their tight end room. Obviously, we, we really love our tight ends here, but they've got a great group, a lot of talent, and you could call them tight ends. But the reality is, they're a matchup issue at as a wide out. Uh, as much as they are at, at tight end. So it's something we have to be conscious you know, of in, in our game plan and where we put our guys in position to be successful. They do a great job of, of using them in a lot of different ways. You know, One of the big decisions is how are you going to match their personnel, right? If you decide to go big, right, and, and uh, play physical, which Georgia obviously can do, right, you might be outmatched in how you can cover, right? And if you decide to go smaller and put yourself in position to cover, Right. Well, now they might outmatch you when it comes to bully bully ball and, and they're able to run it. So they do a great job of mixing it up. Coach Munkin obviously is an elite play caller and does a great job of, of recognizing what you're in and creating open sets when you're when you're big and in creating condensed small sets when you're small. So it'll be fun to see him. You have spent the last few weeks focusing on your players, your team, but you're kind of you're going into a game where you know the coaches, you know the players. You've been with them less than a year ago. Um, do you allow yourself to ever stop and kind of think about what that experience is going to be like? Yeah, I think a lot of people would sit here and say um, it's not about that. You know, very similar to what I said about you know Braden, but there there is there's definitely some feelings of you know excitement for me to go play a team that I you know care about and was uh, a big part of for a long time, but. Um, that's not the focus. You know, it's it's my job, just like it's the player's job, to to focus on the task at hand. Um, but I'm excited to go play a familiar team. There's certainly some advantages to, to that, but they have those same advantages. You just kind of touched on it at the end there, but can you speak to some of the advantages that you might have just from an intimate knowledge of them and then the knowledge, I guess the advantage they have from an intimate knowledge of you? Yeah, I mean, the biggest carryover is going to be I, I, I probably have a good feel for what they're going to do defensively and how they're going to do things defensively. And on the same note, they probably have a good feel of how we're going to do things defensively, right? So uh, I think the, the challenge of a coach is ultimately, you know, Kirby Smart's not going to play a single snap on Saturday, and neither is Dan Lanning, right? So it doesn't really matter what I know. It matters what my players know and what they can execute, right? And uh, sometimes coaches try to get too cute, right? It's going to come down to takeaways. It's going to come down to explosive plays, right? Who can out-hit? Who can out-hustle, right? Who can tackle on the perimeter? Um, you know, that's what this game is really about. And certainly there's some going to be a schematic advantage on both sides, right, at times. Um but that's not ultimately what it's about. It's about who can put their players in position to make plays. Right here on the end, front row. I know you've emphasized a lot that this team has been mainly focused on themselves in the lead up to this game. Um, but it's hard to ignore. Vegas has obviously Georgia like over by two touchdowns. Has the word underdogs ever been thrown around in team meetings or in the locker room at all? 
you know, we don't really bother ourselves with the opinions of others, right? Nobody in Vegas is going to play in this game, right? Our players are going to play in the game. So we, we know what uh, everyone, you know, thinks of our team, and, and uh, that's okay by us, right? Our, our goal is to go out there and play the best game we can possibly play, uh, but that's going to have zero effect on this game. What other opinions, you know, the opinions of others is not going to matter. Coach, the most crucial day of your diet is the recovery day, right? Well, what do you want your guys to follow as you go through not only your first game, but your first travel days? What do you want you guys to follow on their, their days off here when you're traveling? Yeah, just business trip, right? We're going here, um, you know, ultimately to, for a gold hand. It's not, it's not about the occasion, right? It's about playing the game. And that's, you know, the reality is that's our focus. When we travel, you know, we have to have a level of focus, right? We have to, you know, keep the task at hand. And that's, that's the main goal, um, you know, outside of anything else, that's the main focus. Back to James on the left. With that familiarity you have in the personnel, obviously, do you just coach, Dan? What is it that makes Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith? What is about those two guys individually that just makes them the elite players that they are? Yeah, both tremendous guys. You know, obviously, we remember recruiting and being around both of those guys, um, but they're tremendous talents. You know, Jalen is maybe as explosive and as powerful and strong as any um, defensive lineman that I've ever been around. You know, he's you know, he, he would catch passes as a high schooler. He can dunk a basketball uh, in just about any way. Um, Nolan, you know, is a tenacious player, um, plays with great effort and, and physical toughness. And I think that defense is really taking on the personality of Nolan. You know, extremely passionate. Um, he plays really hard every down. He, he's very consistent, uh, extremely demanding, and gets every ounce of his ability out of, you know, the way he plays. So, um, I have a lot of respect for both those guys, um, and we'll obviously be aware of where they're at. Right back here on the right. You and Coach Norvell start off your head coaching careers in very similar ways. Have you talked to him about what the feelings might be like on the sideline, and what do you expect to feel in your first game as head coach? You know, I haven't. I haven't talked to, to him about that. You know, obviously blessed, um, but focused on what, what my responsibility is, right? Uh, excited to go out there and play. You know, my favorite day of the week is Saturday, right? It always has been. It always will be. Um, but we're just excited to go compete. This game's not about me. It's about a lot of other things than that. All the way in the back left, Chris. Yeah, D Dan, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages to opening the season against a team of the magnitude of Georgia? And would you rather have a – be able to get a game under your belt before you, you play a game like this? No, we're pumped to go play. You get to, you know, obviously Georgia's a, a, a great opponent. You know, they've built, Kirby's done a great job of building a program. All those assistant coaches and players have done a great job of building a program over time. And I think they're kicking on all cylinders. But what a great opportunity for us to see exactly where we are, um, you know, early in the season. You know, it's not, there is no powder up game here. You get to go play a real competition really quick, and we're pumped about it. Through camp, you talked a lot about the growth mindset since you've been here. Um, four weeks of camp, three weeks of camp. Just what did you learn about your team as you've kind of flipped that page and start game prepping for the season? You know, I've learned that our players are excited to, to get better. You know, I think our guys, when you challenge them, they look for an opportunity to improve. And we've talked about that 1%. Where can you find that 1%? You know, today we kind of told the story of, you know, boiling water. It doesn't boil until it's 212 degrees. You know, 211 isn't enough. Right, or excuse me, uh, you know, it's not enough. You got to get that, you got to get it cranked up, right? What do you, what can you make that temperature and how, how do you get it going to get boiling water? What's it take? Where's your 1%? So um, that's certainly our focus, you know, and our guys have done a good job of, of operating with that mindset. Dan, Kirby has said that you guys have kept in touch since you took this job. Obviously not talking about this game, but about big picture, kind of bird's eye view uh, kind of stuff. How would you describe your relationship, your friendship with him since you've taken this head coaching job? And do you think he'll kind of continue to be a big mentor, big figure in your career going forward? Yeah, I would I would not be sitting in this seat if it wasn't for Kirby Smart. I'll, I'm forever grateful for, for him and uh, that entire coaching staff. And I'll definitely always lean on him. You know, this is certainly unique. We probably haven't talked as much this summer or as, especially in the last couple of weeks as we will down the road. Um, that being said, when you start playing games, you don't spend a lot of time talking to anybody. Um, but I'll forever lean on, on Coach Smart. Um, I'm, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and the job that he's done. And, and I think he's one of the best in the business. What's game day like for you? You said Saturday's your favorite day. I mean, what what's your demeanor like? Has it evolved over the years? I mean, do you anticipate this Saturday just because your role being different, having to manage your emotions in a different way? 
you know, I got my game day playlist. There's a lot of different things on there. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, I'm going to listen to that. I usually get pretty amped, uh, especially once you're in the locker room there right before kickoff. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a calm before the storm. You know, I was the guy that has to pee like five or six times right before the game starts. Like, I'm, I, I love football, right? And uh, I'm still like that. So I'm sure I'll, right before I take the field, I'll be in the urinal and then we'll be, you know, get a break and then uh, get out there. But like, what, what makes football so great, right? That's what's so awesome about this game is the nerves, uh, the excitement around it. Heck yeah, I get nervous before a game. Like, if you don't, you're lying, right? Like, I'm human. But that's why I love this, you know. So uh, a lot of fun for me. Love Saturday, obviously, for good reason. You know, my job is to make our job for the players easy. Right here on the right. Zach. I understand you don't want to talk about a depth chart with the public, but have you had that conversation with players? And if so, how has that gone so far? This, this yeah, our players have been outstanding. They have a great understanding of our plan, you know, what we, what we plan to do and how we plan to use our players. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said it when I was at Georgia. I'll say the same thing here. If you're good enough, you're old enough, right? So if we can use you and you can help us, we want to use you on the football field and, and play you. Here on the left, Eric. You did designate that both Matt and Kenny would be up in the booth. I wonder if you could kind of go through what went behind those decisions and what, what value it is from each of those up there. You know, we leaned uh, a lot into our scrimmage operation. You know, we use headsets during practice quite a bit as well. Um, but we just feel like both those guys, you know, they give us the best opportunity, you know, from being up top. Uh, to really be able to evaluate and see the whole field. You know, I think that starts with having coaches on the field that you really trust as well. You know, both those guys are really good communicators and they can communicate through the headset um, and, you know, and, and let that play over on the field. Far right on the end here. You obviously coached a lot of NFL talent in your time at Georgia. Has there been any friendly banter uh, between you and your former players? Have they texted you at all in the lead up to this game? I've gotten uh, a few text messages, um, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, I don't think that a lot of them are cheering for me right now, right? And that's okay. Uh, they know I'm cheering for them in every one of their games, and I think they'll be cheering for me in every game after this one. Coach, today Marcus Mariota talked about being an honorary captain at the game, and during the conversation he brought up that he feels like you understand where the program is trying to go and where it's been before. How much does that mean to you to hear that coming from him, given your your goal to connect with the alumni? And also, how important is that for particularly your quarterbacks to have a guy like Marcus in the crowd for this game? Yeah, Marcus is obviously a tremendous human being, and he stands for everything that I think Oregon football stands for, right? He's a, he's a giver, he's a kind person, but he's a tremendous competitor, and he let his play speak for itself on the field. So uh, I just hope that we can continue to have more players like Marcus be associated with us here at Oregon and thrilled that he gets to be around and we get to you know play in his, his home stadium. Dan, I know you guys have the helmet stickers for Spencer, but Cam McCormick had mentioned he wanted to wear 18, and with Spencer's last name, I know that would require quite the appeals process and what not to go through. Just will he be changing jerseys for this weekend, or is that something you're looking for? The whole it hasn't weekend? really been decided yet. Man. Tony Washington's listed now as a defensive GA. Was your player development coach? Just what what brought that, and just how does he impact your program? Yeah, Tony, um, you know, he has aspirations to be a head coach uh, or, excuse me, be a position coach. Um, and he obviously does a great job connecting with our guys and has, you know, knows our guys really well in the role that he's been in the last few years. But, you know, I've always said if you want to be a coach, well, you got to get involved in coaching. And, you know, this is a position right now that it doesn't necessarily take care of Tony in a monetary way, but it allows him to have some experience where he can grow in the profession and have an opportunity to coach down the road. And, I think Tony's got a really bright future, uh, as well as a lot of our young coaches, but this gives him a chance to grow. And ultimately, my goal is every single person in our organization, whatever their dreams and aspirations are, we want to help them reach it. And, you know, I, I was excited that Tony wanted to get involved in coaching, and this gives him that opportunity. Uh, you've said you don't want to get too caught up in the moment of facing your old team, but for your family, you know, they were involved with the Georgia program for four years. How excited are they about uh, returning to the state of Georgia? Is, is it going to be weird for them rooting against the dogs for the first time in a long time? No, they know to cheer for dad. They'll, they'll be excited to cheer for pops. But, uh, you know, our, our crew's excited. You know, they're, they're, they're pumped to get back and play, and it's a fun first game to play in. Coach, you talked to media day about waking up in the middle of the night, being a little bit nervous. Is that something that still happens, or would? How do you feel about like the level of preparation that you've given your team and that you've gained throughout this fall camp? 
Yeah, I think our guys are are prepared and ready. I've been really pleased with the progress. Uh, do I still wake up in the middle of the night sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. Like last night, you know, but that's that's normal. I did that, you know, last year some too. So um, that's football season. That's the way it goes. So. Just, just, I guess Stetson Bennett and last year and his growth and, and kind of owning that role. And now he's obviously knows he's a starter going into a season. Just kind of what did you see from him from a growth perspective last year and what's makes it tough to go against him? You know, Stetson really, if you, you don't know it, but Stetson exudes confidence, right? He's a really confident player. He knows what he knows. He's, he's very intelligent. Uh, there's not a throw he doesn't feel like he can make. And uh, obviously he's an elusive, you know, when he's in the pocket and the way he's able to move and extend plays. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Stetson because he got it the long, hard way, right? Nothing was handed to him. You know, this guy went and earned it. He earned the respect of his teammates and his coaching staff. Um, and I'm, I'm sure for him he's thrilled to have this opportunity, but I promise you he's not get, he's, he's not comfortable in that seat. Like, it, it takes time, and uh, it's still very demanding where he's sitting. Back to James. A couple other aspects of the week, then. One, will you guys be practicing in the moan now that it's obviously a dome and more of a climate-controlled setting than – being outdoors for the week. Uh, not every day, no. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll be in there some, but not each day. And then the other part being, for as much as is being built about your familiarity and their familiarity with you, I think one part that's been a little bit overlooked is Brian McClendon coached this team in its last game, and he's on that sideline and oh, has yeah. some familiarity with this team's personnel. So what have you done by way of preparing for that aspect of things where, yeah, you may know each other defensively, but he knows everything offensively of this, for this team? Yeah, he, he, he may have uh, as much of an advantage as anybody, but, again, Brian's not playing the game. I'm not playing the game. You know, the player's still got to go out there and play the game, right? And uh, I think he certainly knows our players well. He'll be able to help their defensive staff as far as assessing our offensive personnel. I think he'll be able to be a big advantage there for them. Back right, Gary. Back here, Coach. I know your kids want to win this game for themselves, obviously, but uh, they want to win this game for you. How do you approach this game from an emotional standpoint of making sure they don't lose the focus about what this game's all about and playing the game? Yeah, play the game, not the occasion, right? That's, that's certainly the focus. Um, this, you can't win on emotion. You have to win on execution. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to continue to keep in the forefront. And uh, I always feel like you can't let your highs get too high or your lows get too low. Right, wherever the pendulum swings, we're not going to let that affect us uh, until the you know the last uh, zero ticks off that that clock. You know, so that's the way we have to operate. Front left, Matt. You've been on both sides of this now. How much of an advantage is it for your team to not be in school, whereas Georgia still has their school commitments and going to class and. Can you speak on the differences since you've kind of experienced both of those now? Yeah, it's a big plus. I mean, um, giving our guys, you know, the extra time to, to recover, um, you know, be able to, you know, come back over for some nutritional purposes throughout the day, um, get some extra recovery. I think all that's a big benefit. You know, I think where you see it probably affect teams is later on in the season when school does start, that's tough on a quarter system team that, you know, when it does. So uh, certainly a benefit, certainly a plus for us. Um, we've enjoyed having that extra time. You touched on their tight ends kind of collectively and, and their use of multiple tight ends, but in Brock specifically, Dan, from your observation, I realized when you were there, it was a little bit different. You're looking at opposing offenses, not your own. How Did you see anything that either Mizzou or Florida, the teams who borderline limited him, had some opportunities to do so? Because the, one of the biggest questions with him is obviously, how do you go about limiting this guy? And you're not going to give away tactics here. But I mean, did you see certain things that teams were able to incorporate last season that were successful? Yeah, there's some of that, um, you know, but ultimately Brock is a really talented player. And if you make the focus strictly Brock, there's enough other good players on that other side of the ball that are going to beat you. So you have to be conscientious of where he's at at all times. He does a lot of things really well, um, whether it be him in the screen game, you know, even blocking. He's, he's a really good blocker. I still remember when Brock first got to campus for us at, at Georgia and I looked out the window and him and Chaz Chambliss are striking the sled on their own. I mean, he works really hard. That shows up, and that's kind of carried over to the field for him. But uh, I don't think we can make him our own, like our lone focus. Um, and the teams that had success, they still lost those games. So, you know, I'm not going to necessarily follow their plan. Two more here on the right, and then we'll finish there. Uh, Coach, this is being looked at as a as a neutral site game, but it's in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Do you guys treat a, a neutral site versus a true road game differently? And have you had that conversation that this really isn't a neutral site game? 
Yeah, we've worked a lot, you know, some crowd noise situations in practice. You know, that's certainly a big piece of it. Um, I'm excited to see our, our Oregon fans travel. Uh, I know they'll travel well, but there's going to be a little bit more red in the stands, I think, than green, and that's okay. It's going to make for a fun environment for us. So um, we're preparing for it. We're getting ready for it. I feel pretty good. Is, is, it's the last one, so I'll, I'll just keep it open. Is there something about Georgia that we haven't talked about that stands out on tape that you think we should you, we should mention in terms of just strengths for that team? You know, I think a lot's been made of all the people they lost, you know, and uh, especially defensively. And I think there probably hasn't been enough made of all the people they still have, right? They have a lot of great talent there. I think everyone acknowledges that and knows that. Um, they've got a tremendous coaching staff, and they're, you know, they're in year, what, six or – uh, seven to Kirby, so it's it's starting to really click for them. So they've done a good job. I think uh, they'll continue to do a good job, uh, but I know our guys are ready to go get them and excited to play them. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.